Hi guys! After the unboxing and assembly videos of the TiVo Up Hydra, we will now share with you the full review. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui, and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, the Hydra is the newest machine from TiVo Up. It's a 2-in-1 machine that includes a module for 3D printing and one for laser engraving. In our previous videos, you can find the unboxing with the first analysis and the assembly with the first tests. Today, we will review this machine and show you all the details and the many tests we have done. Also, at the end of the video, you can check the main pros and cons of this machine. Now, the Hydra has a somewhat modern design and it has a print volume of 305 by 305 by 400 millimeters. Regarding the electronics, the Hydra has an MKS Robin Nano version 3.0. It's equipped with the 32-bit microcontroller, four replaceable TMC's 2209 silent drivers, and a Wi-Fi module. The connections look well done, and the wires that connect to the screw-type connectors, they all have ferrules on them. The power supply is a 24 volt and 8.5 amp model. As we mentioned, the heat bed is AC powered and it's controlled by this solid state relay. The display is a 3.5 inch colored touch screen, also from MakerBase. The machine comes almost fully assembled and you only need to attach the top half to the base. Secure it with four long screws, two on each side and connect a few cables. Unlike the previous printers from this manufacturer, the Hydra includes a spool holder. This also needs to be assembled and installed at the top of the printer. The filament sensor wires on our machine came uninstalled, but we were informed that in the future all these machines will be sent with the filament sensor cable already installed. The filament sensor is placed on the filament spool holder. However, it seems that something is missing here because the sensor is not properly secured and easily falls down during printing. During the first tests, we noticed that the filament sensor was not working. During our troubleshoot, we found one of the pins from the connector on the board side was loose. This was easily fixed by pushing the filament pin in and the filament sensor started to work as expected. Most of the connections on the top side are made with flat cables, which gives a cleaner look. The print bed is this 5mm thick and 310 by 310 glass bed, and it's AC powered, which means it heats up pretty fast. It took less than a minute to heat up from 20 degrees C up to 60 degrees C. Using a thermal camera, we can see that the temperature is more or less even, except near the four corners where the screws and springs are located. The manufacturer included a ground wire coming from the power supply to the metal components on the heat bed for extra protection. And under the heating element is an insulation pad to preserve the heat. We tested PLA and TPU, and we must say that the print surface works pretty well. With the bed at 60 degrees C, the filament sticks pretty good. And when it cools down, the printed piece comes off by itself. To level the bed, this machine has these cool orange knobs. And the springs seem strong. All the axes run on wheels. And while the X and Y axes are driven by belts, the Z-axis is driven by a couple of stepper motors and lead screws. The lead screws are linked at the top by a timing belt and secured by a couple of bearings. The advantage of the belt at the top of the lead screws is to keep them both in sync. 
especially in those cases where we need to raise or lower the Z by hand. However, this combination of belt and top bearings only work well if the lead screws are perfectly straight, which in case of our machine they are not. By removing the bearings and the belt, we can easily see the misalignment. So to avoid having printing issues, we decided to remove the bearings and the belt right from the start. The X and Y axes don't have any end stops. Instead, the TMC drivers are set up with a sensorless homing feature. And the Z is equipped with the touch leveling sensor. While leveling, the touch sensor probes the bed nine times. The printer does not have belt tensioners, but for the X axis, we only need to loosen these two screws under the idler mount and adjust. For the Y axis adjustment, that is done by loosening the four screws on the Y axis stepper motor. The problem is that this adjustment can only be done from underneath, which is not very easy. Along the way, we notice some amount of wear on our Y axis belt. After a close inspection, we could see that it was the idler that was causing the damage on the belt. The idler is made from a couple of bearings, and it probably needs a spacer in between so it can have more room for the belt. The X axis carriage was designed for quick and easy head replacement. The electrical connections between the carriage and the heads are made by these pads on the heads and these pins on the carriage. To install the head, we simply align the head with the carriage and slide it all the way down. To lock it in place, we use a screw at the back side. We decided to use the Allen screw instead of the thumb screw because the thumb screw is too small and it's not easy to tighten by hand with the wheels so close. The print head comes with a dual gear extruder and a V6 hot end with PTFE lined heat break in a direct drive setup. For the extruder, they used a small pancake type stepper motor. We were told that in the future it's possible that this hot end might come with an all-metal heat break instead. Between the layer cooling fan and the hot end, there's also a touch leveling sensor. At the front is the hot end cooling fan and at the side is a nice blower for layer cooling. The filament is inserted directly on the pneumatic fitting on the extruder. It's not a concern, but we decided to install a bit of PTFE tube on the filament entry. The standard kit comes with one of these print heads and this 2.5 watt laser. It's possible to get a 5.5 watt laser as upgrade option. Both laser heads are equipped with fixed focus laser modules. This means that we need to adjust the Z height to focus the laser. One of the positive things of this printer is the display menus. It has lots of menus and options. It's possible to access many parameters such as the traditional acceleration and speeds, stepper driver settings, sensorless sensitivity, pause coordinates, and so on. One thing that is currently not working is the load and unload filament feature. When selecting one of these options, we get the progress bar, but the extruder never loads or unloads the filament. However, we believe that it might be an easy fix with the future firmware update. The files can be loaded from a micro SD card or from a USB flash drive. And these are some of the test prints we have done. First, we tested printing the traditional Benchy. We also printed a superhero minium. Then we printed this scary monster. The printer is very silent while printing, even the fans are all very quiet. And to test the prints along the Z-axis, we printed a tall Eiffel Tower. While printing, we have a clear view of the nozzle which is great to check the first layers. The only thing that is missing is probably a small LED to light up the printing area. We also tested the print resume feature and it worked. However, when resuming the print, 
It first heats up and only then moves the nozzle away. All this time that the nozzle stays over the print will create a defect on the model with a bit of melted plastic. We also tested the model using TPU filament. As for the results and for the Benchy, we can see that it turned out okay. The walls are actually pretty smooth. As for the Minium, this model has lots and lots of small details. And the printer was able to capture all of them. The print came out very, very nice. The only issue we detected with this model was at the back and on its feet, and it indicates an issue with the cooling. The cause was not the blower itself, which actually can provide lots of air. The culprit was the fan deck design, which was pointed too high and therefore not sending all the air to the correct spot. The manufacturer sent us a new design, and with the new one installed, we can see that the cooling capability was improved. However, it's still not 100% perfect. The Eiffel Tower also turned out very good. We cannot see any issues along the Z on this print. The walls are very smooth all the way. This next model was printed using rainbow filament. It looks awesome, however, and although this machine is equipped with TMC drivers, we can see a bit of what it seems to be salmon skin effect. Most of the prints were done with PLA filament, except this one, which was printed with flexible filament. The dual gear extruder had no issues printing with TPU filament. In the menu, there is an option to switch between printing and engraving. To test the laser mode, we used the Lightburn software. When setting up Lightburn for the Hydra, there are a few things you need to do. When creating the machine, you need to select Marlin and not GRBL. And then, in Machine Settings, you need to select Inline Mode. Although you can connect your computer to the printer, control the printer and run a print by USB cable, the same is not possible in Engraving Mode. To run the engraver, we need to generate the G-code file and run it through the memory card or flash drive. We also had issues running jobs with code generated with Lightburn. For some reason, the laser did not turn completely off when traveling, and because of this, it created these lines on the engravings. After some investigation done by the TivoUp engineers, they sent us a firmware update, and with it, the issue with the travel lines was fixed. These are some examples of engravings done with the stock 2.5 watt laser. This laser module can also cut, but only very thin and soft wooden boards. With the more powerful laser, we tested engraving and also cutting MDF wood. In this example, it cut a 3mm MDF board with a few passes. There are still a few bugs with the laser mode, but the guys from TivoUp are still working on this. As for the pros and cons, and for the positive side, we have the assembly. This machine is very easy to assemble and takes only a few minutes to get it ready. The Hydra is a two-in-one machine. It can do 3D printing and laser engraving. It also includes a system to quickly change between heads. It's equipped with a 32-bit board and removable TMC drivers. The connections are well-made 
and all the wires that connect to the screw type connectors have ferrules on them. The print head is set up as direct drive and equipped with a dual gear extruder, a pancake stepper motor and a V6 hot end. The printing volume is 305 by 305 by 400 millimeters, which is very nice. For the Z-axis, the Hydra has two lead screws and two stepper motors. It also includes a touch leveling sensor and a filament runout sensor. The print pad is made from carborundum glass and it's AC powered. While printing, the machine is very silent thanks to the low noise fans and silent drivers. The user interface is also on the positive side. It's very user friendly and with lots of options. This machine accepts micro SD cards and USB flash drives to load the files. As for the print quality, from the models we have made, it got good results. On the negative side we have the filament sensor wires did not came pre-installed on our machine, but the manufacturer said that they will come pre-installed in future batches. Also on the filament sensor is the fact that there is no way to properly secure it in place. We also have the lead screws that came a little bent, which made us remove the top bearings and belt to prevent having printing quality issues. The belt adjustment is not something that is done very often, but still we have to point out that the tension adjustment is done from the bottom side of the printer, which is not as easy. We also have the Y-axis front idler, which needs to be addressed. Maybe it needs a spacer in the middle of the two bearings to prevent damaging the belt as we have seen on ours. The filament load and unload option in the menu is currently not working on our firmware version. The print resume feature works but maintains the nozzle over the model while heating up. If the home sequence was executed before heating up, it would protect the model from melting. The fan duct had to be replaced to improve the cooling capability, however, it still needs a bit more developing. Although the print quality is very good, we have found a little bit of what it seems to be salmon skin effect on one of our test prints. Also on the negative side, we have to point out that on the laser mode, the jobs need to run from the memory card or USB flash drive, since we cannot connect the computer to the machine and control it directly. The laser feature also needs a bit more developing. It works, it engraves and cuts, but it still has a few bugs. And that's it you guys. If we have any updates, we will add the information here on the video description and depending on the case, we might make an update video as well, so stay tuned. Hope this video was useful. We will see you guys next time. Bye!